muestro su rostro Ser Ven a donde vamos Y danos el saber Cuando no sabemos Es nuestra oración to you when we sing because I can't hear myself <laughs> and I think that's the same reason you, you know what I'm saying we don't yeah, stand just, so yeah, because, as close as other uh, singers married couples well, who sing it, together it, it, it's, it's, like this. it's too loud it's just too loud it's too loud it's just too loud <laughs> too, oh. too loud oh my gosh wow okay 
Well, praise God. I uh, hope you guys are uh, uh, out there tonight. This is um, oh, no, this we're is out there. Super. <laughs> <laughs> we're really out this there. This is a super important me message tonight, and I just um, really want to get right into it. Oh, I want to congratulate the winner of our Mother's Day basket. If you guys didn't think that that was a real, real contest, it really was. Uh, uh, we picked one winner. Um, and that winner was Rachel Marquez of Visalia, California. She has a beautiful Mother's Day basket coming her way. Um, so I think she should get, I think she might have gotten it today or tomorrow. So I'm really excited about that. Um, Geraldine Polish donated that uh, to, uh, to the ministry is to awesome. get to one uh, very blessed lady for thank Mother's you, Day. So, yes, yeah, thank you again. Thank you again. You know, wanna, oh, go I ahead. just want to thank everybody who has really been a part of what we're trying to accomplish and what we're actually what we're what we are accomplishing in the lives of, of many people who are willing to receive the truth. Uh, they're, they're, it's just a blessing to be able to share the gospel freely and with with absolute no boundaries. And uh, so it's, it's very exciting for us. I pray it's a blessing to your family. The, I know we have the Karis family, who's just an incredible support of this ministry. And uh, I mean, just uh, just tons of people. And I, I'm just very grateful and very thankful for that. Because without y'all, we're just talking to each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're encouraging each other, which yeah. that's what we do every day. That's right. When we that's walk, right. we, we, we challenge each that's other. Right. And, you know, what, what really, um, yeah, you want to come here a little bit? Here we go. And you can see all the wrinkles on my hair. <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah, it's getting gray, guys. And then, yeah, boy, it's a. At least you have hair. Yeah, wow. She thanks. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. So, um, oh, I want to remind you all, uh, remind you guys of a very important thing. It's called Learn Your Bible Challenge. So we're going to. Uh, I forgot. Yeah, I know. I did too. I did too. I got caught up in, in Mother's Day. We are bad, bad, bad. But, uh, but next week, we want you guys to have your <laughs> scriptures ready. It's uh, basically learn your, learn your Bible Challenge is learning one verse of scripture per week. That's all. How about, like, how about once a month? Get, no, well, we're trying, we're trying to do, we're trying to make this a challenge. We're trying to make this challenging. I understand. Oh. Bishop <laughs> said, Bishop said so once a year, right, Bishop? Sure. Per week. <laughs> one year. You know, so you have to um, just pick a scripture, you know, just one, it could be just one verse of scripture and um, just meditate on it yeah, several times yeah. a day, speak it, sure. um, read it, you can write it out, do, do whatever you wanna do, put it in your phone, put it as a wallpaper in your phone. Um, that's what I did last time and that helped me a lot. So every time I looked at my phone, uh, I would look at the scripture. So, and that and most just helps. People, you know, where I work, everybody's got their phone in their face. Yeah, exactly, it's like, exactly. What would we, we do without these phones? And, yeah, I know, I know. It's amazing to me. I if I was a phone company, I'd jack the prices up. I want up. to throw mine in the ocean one day, but I mean, look, not today. You, you, not very, today. <laughs> you look very uh, uh, Prince Princesscus. Oh, thank you, Princess Princesscus. Thank, thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Love your curls. And your, thank you. Uh, yes, thank you. Maybe thank you can you. rub some curls on my curl. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody can have curls. Anybody can it's have the, curls. It's the curly hair method. Anybody can have girls. Oh, almost, 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 almost. Well, we got a lot of notes, honey. Yeah, yeah, we so, got a lot of notes. So we're going to break this up into right what, into a 14 week series. So, guys, have those scriptures ready next week. Learn your Bible. The kids are going to do it. We are going to do Viviana? it. Um, yes, she did an awesome you? job last time. Yes, she learned a scripture last, not not the last meeting, but the meeting. Before. That's right. And so that's awesome. That's awesome. And also, she's, she's going to share her testimony, too. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Awesome. Um, the whole point is, uh, the Bible says, um, your word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. So that's one of the things that the word of God does. It helps you to not sin against the Lord. You know, so when I we really have the word... I really talk about sin. You're really starting to offend me. <laughs> <laughs> but I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, uh, anyway. But, you know, but a higher place family, we love you. We thank you for yes, being with us, guys. Alex and, and the And you crew. guys for coming on. Again, invite yeah. somebody 
right now. They Frankly, need to hear this message. Everyone needs to hear this. You know what? And I want to lift up Bill Drake. Chris's dad. Oh, yes. And yes. pray that, you know, God continues yes. to do a healing in his yes. life, mm -hmm. in his, in his, in his uh, uh, yes. body. In his soul. In his soul, in his soul. right. Yes. A, but Chris is a, a wonderful, yes. wonderful man of God. Yes. We love we you, Chris. We thank you for Bill Drake's healing, complete, yes. total recovery. And we just thank you, God, for deliverance, for salvation, yes. for whatever his, his needs might for be, that they will be he, met. Yes, Lord, Jesus in Jesus' name. name. All right. This is the 10 point plan to destroy your faith guys if you don't think this that there stuff, is man. a real plan or plot or conspiracy against your faith you are very very wrong very i mean it's this hidden, can't be more clear it's hidden in plain yeah, yeah, sight yeah yeah i had never heard this this information before um, until about a week or two ago, and it took wow. me quite some time to kind of get these notes together and to kind of research all this material, because it's really, really a lot, um, because it has to do with so many different issues that are, that are going on right now in the world today. This, guys, is going, this blew my mind. This blew my mind, so I think that it's going to do the same for you and Ultimately, guys, this is going to draw you closer to the Lord Amen. and everybody. And I believe that people are going to come to the Lord. I just declare it and I decree it right now that uh, souls are going to come into the kingdom, okay, um, because of this, this very information. Um, so this is the 10-point plan to destroy. Some people have called it uh, the 10-point plan of rebellion, um, the 10-point strategy um, but I'm calling it the 10-point plan to destroy your faith, or really to destroy Christianity as a whole, all, all the Judeo-Christian uh, beliefs and, um, and traditions. So, so let's get started. Um, this story starts with a woman named Alice Bailey. <laughs> Guys, take notes. Please get your Bibles out or another device where you can some look at your Bible. Um, I want you guys to, to research all this information, okay? Um, the story begins with a woman named Alice Bailey, who was born in 1880 in Manchester, England. Um, yeah, oh, just a minute. Um, I think I'll, I'll tell you when. I'll tell you when. I'm going to tell a little bit about her life. Um, despite, she was, she was born into a very wealthy, uh, privileged family in the, eight, now this is in the 1880s over in England. Um, she had a desperately unhappy childhood. She attempted to commit suicide three times before she was 15 years old. So I have something in common actually with this, with this lady. She, she struggled with depression. Big time, big time in suicidal thoughts. So I, I, can, I can really relate to that. Um, tragically, uh, both her parents died when she was around eight years old. Um, she went to live with her grandparents. And um, the grandparents, you know, at that time, you know, this is the 1880s. I mean, everybody went to church, you know. And um, the, the family went to church one morning on a Sunday morning. And Alice, who was a you know, rebellious. She was a rebellious teenager. I mean, she admits that, that she was rebellious, that she was hateful, um, and she wanted to stay home. She refused to go to church. Wow. Okay, so she was home by herself, okay, and uh, everybody had gone to church. Now, when she was home alone, she had a supernatural visitation by a supernatural being, Okay, a man looked like a man in European clothes and a turban. This is the way she describes this this supernatural visitation that she 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 actually experienced herself. Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. He he told her that she needed to develop self control. Interesting, because she was kind of out of control, young girl. And uh, that she needed to develop self-control to prepare to prepare for a certain work planned for her to do. There was a work planned for her to do. Now she thought this person 
was Jesus. Wow, she thought this person was Jesus, but later she realizes that it was not, that it was not Jesus, okay? Um, just to describe the first 20 years of her life uh, became the social norm of that time. She was involved in, in evangelism, as a matter of fact. Hmm. Believe it or not, she was, she was involved in evangelism. She became an evangelist. She described it as forcefully preaching the old time religion forcefully preaching i don't know why forcefully <laughs> but uh she said it was forcefully preaching the old time religion she even married an episcopal man who was studying theology well, forcefully is when they, they lock people into the church <laughs> and then said you're staying until you hear what i got to say exactly <laughs> We've experienced exactly. that. Right, I guess they help people. We should that last She week. held people hostage. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, she even went on to marry an Episcopal man who was studying theology, and she actually became a Bible teacher. Wow. She became a Bible teacher. Um, you know, they started to have trouble in their marriage, and the marriage soon ended on grounds of violence and physical abuse. This is what she alleges. Um, in 1915... When Alice uh, was 35 years old, she was introduced to theosophy. And we're going to explain what that is. And uh, she came under the teachings of Helen Blavatsky, particularly Helen's book called The Secret Doctrine, if any of you have heard of this. Um, now, just to give you a little bit of background on what is theosophy and who is Helen Blavatsky very quickly, um, Blavatsky's Theosophical Society, uh, Helen Blavatsky founded the Theosophical Society in New York City in 1875 with its motto of there is no religion higher than truth. That's true. Which is, that's pretty that's, cool. That's awesome. That's I love that. Motto. You know what? That's our motto. <laughs> That's true. Not exactly. Not exactly. <laughs> no, no, because you know the history. Yeah, here. Yes, yes. There is no religion higher than truth. Okay, so this is a uh, a religion who f believes that they have found some truth, some or, or or truth. Now, just to give you a little bit of a background on theosophy. Theosophy denies the existence of a personal infinite God. The, uh, theosophy denies the need of forgiveness, mm -hmm. which describes me of somebody um, who says that they didn't need forgiveness. They must be a theosophist. Um, theosophy teaches that Christ was a great soul, quote unquote, great soul who inhabited, inhabited the body of a man named Jesus for a few years. And this is also an ancient Gnostic uh, belief. All right, so just to give you again a little bit of background on Blavatsky and this book, The Secret Doctrine. All right, um, a very well known theosophist is Hitler. Hitler was a theosophist and, sl and actually slept with Blavatsky's book at his bedside. Wow. This was his, wow. this was his, like, we sleep with our Bibles, you know, on our, on our bedside or, or, you know, our, our Bibles in our phones, what have you. Um, he slept with uh, Blavatsky's book at his bedside, and he was a theosophist. So this is going to tell you a little bit about theosophy. Um, is theosophy still around? Yes in the form of New Age religion, and, and New Age religion is coincidentally in every facet of our society mm -hmm. now, guys. Mm -hmm. You guys need to know this. New Age religion is everywhere we look and everywhere we go, okay? Um, before long, now going back to Alice Bailey, she became a teacher of theosophy. I mean, she did a 180 when she divorced her Christian husband, she also divorced Christianity. Wow. Essentially. And she became an actual teacher 
of theosophy, okay? Again, this Hitler was a theosophist, okay? Now, uh, one day in the shrine room of the Theosophical Lodge, she saw a portrait of the Lodge. man. Yes, the Theosophical <laughs> the secret Theosophical answer. Society or Theosophical Lodge. Guess she saw a portrait of somebody, and guess who it was? <laughs> the man who had visited her, this who had visited her supernaturally when she was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. She said, this was the man that I was visited by. Yeah, at the, uh, in, a, in a portrait at the Theosophical Society. Very interesting. Huh? Um, they, she thinks, that's what she thinks it was. She thinks it was some sort of, well, they call, actually, she called it a master of wisdom. That's what she called it. Yeah. Yes, he was considered a master of wisdom and was part of the spiritual hierarchy of this, in this Theosophical Lodge. Now, in 1919, she worked in the Theosophical Society headquarters in Hollywood, California, which coincidentally I looked up is still there. The Theosophical Society headquarters is still in Hollywood, California, okay? Again, this is telling you something about theosophy and its connection with Hollywood, okay? So, um, yeah, Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, yes, Hollywood or whatever else you want to call it. <laughs> During this time, she was visited again by a spiritual being. Now, I don't know if this was the actual same being, but it was another, but it was either the same being or another spiritual being. And um, this voice came to her and said, there are some books that is that it is desired should be written for the public. <laughs> oh, how nice. You can write them. Will you do so? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, she initially refused because she said, oh, no, I'm not interested in being a psychic. That's what she said. That's what she said. She says, I'm not interested in psychic activity. She knew that she would need to be some sort of medium. By this time, mm -hmm. she knew that this spirit was not um, Jesus. Right. And was not... Uh, Correct. An angel? Yeah. Was not an was angel. Was not an angel right. of, of the Lord. So it wasn't sent by Jesus. Exactly. Exactly. So she knew that she needed to be uh, some sort of medium. <clears throat> and she didn't, want, she didn't want to do it. She said, however, this spirit persisted and persisted, and she went on to have a telepathic relationship and became the muse for this spirit for the next 30 years in writing 24 books. Yes. Guys, again, we're talking about Alice Bailey, all right? In 1921, um, her and her new husband, who, by the way, was a 32nd degree Freemason. Congratulations. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they founded, listen to this, guys, they founded the Lucifer Publishing Company. <laughs> oh, no, that's, no, see. see the so Lucifer I, I gotta stop Publishing right <clears throat> Company. You know, I want this you to, is true. This I is want, a true story, guys. guys this, Everybody this, needs to know this. This is probably one of the most significant and impactful messages we're going to have in a long time. You ain't going to hear this in any church. And well, I you, hope they do. I, I, I hope everybody knows. Guys, invite somebody in, please. Yeah. This is crucial. Important. This is pivotal. This you know, is I just want to so say, important. I want you to take your Everybody time. Everybody to know. I want you to take your time. Yeah, I am. Okay, we're yeah, not. We're, you know, we we're, are. Yeah, but we're going to be brief. And we'll, we'll just, you know, next week. Yeah, Wednesday, we're not going to we'll, go over, but we're, we'll probably continue. You oh, know, no, we are so going to in, So much information. And, and understanding yeah, this I'm information. Next week. And this, again, this information is hidden in plain sight. Yeah, hidden. But yeah, what happens. In plain sight, yes. Right, but what we do as Christians as we just push it off. We don't want to hear these things, but we need to hear them. We need to wake up. Yes, Go ahead, honey. yes. Okay, so by 1925, they were forced to change the name because people, again, this is 1925. Wow. Um, they were forced to change the name to Lu Lucis Trust, okay? Lucis Trust, guys. 
Now, if you go, now, Luce's Trust still exists, okay? And there you can go to their website. And this was their explanation for why um, Alice and Foster Bailey had to change Lucifer Publishing Company to Luce's Trust. This because is what they said. Lucifer wasn't making any money? Um, <laughs> what was it? You okay? Yes. Um, this is this is what it says on the Lucis Trust website. You guys can go there, okay? Lucis Trust. Um, both Lucifer and Lucis come from the same word root, Lucis, being the Latin generative case meaning of light. <laughs> the Bailey's reason for choosing the original name are not <clears throat> known to us, but we can only surmise that they like the great teacher H.P. Blavatsky, again, remember that name, for whom they had enormous respect, okay? Sure. Sought, they, it says they sought to elicit a deeper understanding of the sacrifice made by Lucifer. Alice and Foster Bailey were serious students and teachers of theosophy a spiritual tradition which views Lucifer as one of the solar angels, okay? So they did view him as an angel. Those advanced beings, which in fact, yes, in fact, he is a fallen angel. It says, those advanced beings who theosophy says descended thus the fall from Venus to our planet eons ago to bring the principle of mind to what was yeah. then animal man. See, they, they think we came from sure. animals. Sure, monkeys, so. yeah. In the theosophical perspective, the descent of these solar angels was not a fall into sin or disgrace, as is depicted in, in the Bible, but rather an act of great sacrifice, as is suggested in the name Lucifer, which means light bearer. Guys, please invite somebody on. Invite somebody on. Okay, so this was Luce's trust um, uh, explanation of why it was changed from Lucifer Publishing Company, okay, that was the original name, to Luce's Trust, all right? Now, coincidentally, Luce's Trust is in the United Nations building. Oh, is that like a church? <laughs> United Nations, what was that? That beautiful place where people... United Nations yeah, in well, New York City. Yeah. New York City. Yeah. One of the most powerful organizations oh, yeah. in all the world. Oh, yeah. Now, Alice Bailey, uh, just a couple of quotes from her. Um, Alice Bailey said, and this was when, I, I guess she has, an, uh, she has 24 books, and I guess one of them is, is autobiographical. And she says, I would really render a service if I could show people how I became what I am from what I was. It might be useful to know how a rabid Orthodox Christian worker could become a well-known occult teacher. So she admits that she went from Christianity to the occult. And she really wanted people to benefit in sure. knowing that. Now, just another, another quote from her, which I find interesting um, because she addresses the, uh, the Freemasons. She says, the Masonic movement is the... Is that a music group, the Freemasons? <laughs> It is a religion, and it is a secret society. And it's witchcraft. Which you guys have not heard of Freemason, which we had not it's heard of it until it's Luciferian. Not, not too long ago. Correct. This is what she says about... And it's about, connected to the Catholic mm -hmm, Church. Because she way. became a Freemason with her husband, with her new husband, because he, he was already a 32nd degree mm -hmm. Freemason. Now, she says about the Masonic movement, <laughs> she says, the Masonic movement is the custodian of the law the holder of the mysteries and the seat of initiation, a far more occult organization that can be realized, intended to be the training school for coming advanced occultists. Okay? <laughs> Guys, if you have any doubts about Freemasonry, 
This is what Alice Bailey said about Freeman. And she was an occult teacher. No, it's just a silly little says, handshake. That's all it is. That's no, what they, that's no, what they tell it's you. Not, it's they not. tell you these things. Guys, and they try to grab them while they're young in college through, no. uh, through fraternities and sororities, guys. This is nothing but, um, you know, Freemasonry 101, okay? This is what this is. Any secret society where you make pledges and oaths to another god is not of God, okay? Please, guys, get that clear. And please, please invite somebody on. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Okay, thank you. It's okay. No problem. Okay, my son is, is going to go to college. I hope. And uh, I'm like, you know, but yes, we're we'll looking through the brochures of these these colleges. You know, here's the book they give you, you know, for, to, to show, show you how wonderful it is, and all the wonderful organizations that are involved in it, and where they get all their, where are they getting their dough from? Okay, but like here, it's like, what is this? The uh, the clubs and student organizations. <laughs> you know, I just want to show. Can you see? Can you see what it is there? Hang on, I'll let you read it. <laughs> There, there you go. There's one down here. Okay, all these nice, nice little clubs. Okay, nowhere is is Jesus mentioned. <laughs> nowhere will Jesus ever. Well, those be mentioned. are the the um, just an example of the fraternities and sororities. And oh, um, look at this. What is this? What is this that thing? is the beginning. The That's, Kappa. That that is sort of the. One of the ways that they get people into Freemasonry. Right, that's how they, that's how they get the skull and bones. Through, those other yes, things. skull and bones. Yeah. But it could be Pi, Theta, Kappa, Lambda Nu, Lambda Beta, uh, Sigma, Kappa, Delta. I mean, there's so I mean, many. We're there's, going to college so many. to learn how to be a doctor or a lawyer. And this is what you got to read first? Wait, wait, what is this? Right. Obviously, it's awful, awfully important. Right. No, for it to be one of the first things in the, in the brochure. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how deceptive yeah. of a world do yeah. we live in, yeah. people? You know, and it's not being weird. I mean, we're not being strange or weird. No, they're yeah. being strange and weird. It's they're right. being deceptive. No, actually, they're not being deceptive. They're being very bold. Mm -hmm. That's why we can be bold with what's in us. Because right. greater is in, in us than he who was of this world. Amen. Guys, invite somebody on, please. Everyone needs to hear this. Everyone needs to know this information, please. We're going to really get started here. I just wanted to give you a little bit of background of her life and, and her influences, and, and I just wanted to tell you a little bit about her. Now, Alice Bailey created this 10-point charter. I think you can bring the, the, okay. the screen up. She created this 10-point charter that is placed right now in the House of Lords, the House of Commons in the UK. Some of you might know. Can they see that? Some of you might know. Uh, I think so. Some of you might know where that is. No. We should bring it a little closer in. Uh, some of you might know where that is. Okay. Okay. You want to back it up again? Sure. Um, she created this 10-point uh, charter that is placed in the House of Lords, House of Commons in the UK. All right, now, the strategy, the strategy for this 10-point charter of Alice Bailey, okay, uh, which is coincidentally adopted by the UN. Right, okay, she, she got a, What's that? Yeah, she's homie. There you go. Okay. You can, see, um, you, can, you can see the thing in the back? which coincidentally is adopted by the UN. We talked about the United Nations because Luce's Trust, the publishing company, is basically, I don't know, I don't know, I think they're just like door to door, but it's in the UN building. They're in the same building, okay? Now, the purpose of this 10-point plan, guys, listen up. This is so important. I want you to catch this. The purpose is to change Christian tradition or to redeem the nations from Christian traditions to the new world order, okay? This is the uh, objective, okay, of this 10-point charter. Again, that's in the House of Lords, the House of Commons in the UK, and is adopted 
by the United Nations. And I think the date for that is 1945. If anyone can find that out when this was actually written and published, um, that would be awesome. I was really, really trying to find that information, but I think it was 1945. I think she passed away in 1949, which would be just really a few years before her death. All right, this is what Alice Bailey said, and this is what this charter says. This is going to blow your mind. I mean, it still blows my mind every time I look at it. All right, Alice Bailey said, when you are changing a nation, don't bother with the old people. They are too suck, stuck in the old traditions. They will not change, but go for the children. And that is what she did. She said, go for the children, especially 10 years and below. Wow. Now this was in 19, I think it's 1945. So, so anyone who was, you know, younger than 10 years old then was victim, you know, and anyone who's under 10 years old, well, every, everybody is victim to this now. And we'll see what this woman, what she is considered the prophetess a handsome woman. of the new age. She's considered the prophetess of the new age. Guys, invite somebody on. We're getting ready to go over these points. All right, point number one. Take, Angel, you gotta join me, please. No, I gotta, I gotta do the computer here. Point number one. Oh yeah, point number one. Take God and prayer out of the education system. She said, change curriculum to ensure that children are freed from the bondage of Christian culture. Oh, that's too Back up, back up. That's too Back up, because I'm trying to get close to the TV, honey. Okay. So they can see, that needs to be clear. Can they see that? Okay. All right, again, she said, num point number one, take God and prayer out of the education system. Change curriculum to ensure that children are free from the bondage of Christian culture. Why? Because children go to school to be equipped to face life. They are willing to trust and they are willing to value what is being given to them. If you take God out of education, they will unconsciously form a resolve that God is not necessary to face life. They will focus on those things the school counts them worthy to be passed on, and they will look at God as an additional, if one can afford the additional. Guys, do you hear what she is saying here? Do you hear what she is saying? She wanted God to be diminished out of the education system. She said, take God and prayer out of the education system. Let them, let these children view it as just an additional, you know, something, something additional that they really can, they can do without. Yeah, but what we have is the Pledge of Allegiance. Yes, that's right. That's right. All right. So now, did this happen? Yes, guys, an overwhelming yes. Madeline Murray O'Hare is best known for the Murray versus Cut Kurtlet lawsuit, which led to the landmark Supreme Court rule ending official Bible reading in American public schools in 1963. This came one year after the Supreme Court prohibited officially sponsored prayer in schools in Engel versus v Vitali. I don't know how to pronounce that name. Okay, so Official Bible reading ended in 1963, and, pr and prayer was taken out of school in 1962. Again, please look these things up, research them, um, and verify that these things are, are, in fact, are true. Now, Madeline Murray O'Hare, who was a very um, well-known the um, atheist. She was a very well-known atheist, okay? I mean, this is very sad, but this was the end of her life. Um, she was found... Is that her there? She looks like Rocky Marciano. No, 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 no. Actually, that is that is not Alice Bailey. That's Helen Blavatsky. I don't know why they have that there. Even though, well, she was the inspiration for She's another Alice movie. Bailey's work. Are you going to squeeze in here? I 
Okay. I keep losing weight, I'll squeeze in, but right now. All right. Um, so, all right. So just a little, tell you a little bit about Madeline Murray O'Hare's life. She was a very well-known atheist. And um, unfortunately, her, her granddaughter and one of her sons was uh, murdered and dismembered in 1995. Guys, that was the end of their lives. And I'm not saying that with any kind of, um, uh, I just wanted to let you know how her life ended very, very sadly, very off, awful. Now, now her, one of her, another one of her sons um, actually became a born again Christian. Hallelujah. This is what is so incredible. This is what is so amazing. Guys, everybody needs to know this. So invite somebody on. Um, this is what he said about his mother. He says, my mother was not just Madeline Murray O'Hare, the, the, uh, the, the atheist leader. She was an evil person wow. who led many to hell. This, wow. is, this is his quote. That is hard for me to say about my own mother, but it is true. My mother Jeez. simply believed, do what thou wilt <laughs> shall be the only law. You guys, she was not only an atheist. I mean, I think that some of you know, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law or shall be the only law comes from the satanic Bible and that is inspired by Aleister Crawley, okay? So she was not only an atheist. Many people believe she was actually a Satanist, okay? And this was her, this was her son, William, J., quote from her, William J. Murray, who is now a born-again Christian. Amen. All right, um, just to get into some scripture, Proverbs 9, 10, for those of you who might believe that maybe God should not be in school or prayers shouldn't be in school, the Bible says, Proverbs 9, 10, um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Guys, if wisdom does not include God, it is worth nothing. In fact, I was reading that in Ecclesiastes Solomon was talking about that. He said, the more wisdom I get, the more grief I get. Wow. He said, the more, the more wisdom I get, the more sorrow I get. Um, because if the, if the fear of the Lord is not mixed with wisdom. What's that? Next video. Oh, oh just hold on one second. Um, then, then wisdom means nothing. And this was their search. God, this, was, this is the whole search of Alice Bailey and Blavatsky and, and the, uh, this whole theosophical thing is they followed beings called masters of wisdom. They were after wisdom. But guys, this is earthly wisdom. This is earthly wisdom. It's, it's the, the wisdom that the Bible talks about that is earthly, demonic, and sensual, okay? It's all flesh and it's all carnal. Again, wisdom is not wisdom without God. Um, Proverbs 1 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Again, wisdom that comes from God. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of everything that you need to know and everything that you will ever need to know. The fear of the Lord, okay? It starts with the fear of the Lord. If you have the fear of the Lord, then you cannot have knowledge or wisdom that is worth anything. 2 Peter 1 3, his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory, called us by glory and virtue. Okay, so his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Okay, so we don't have to search outside the boundaries of the word of God, guys. We don't have to search outside beyond God's word for life, for godliness, mm -hmm. for wisdom, and for instruction, okay? Mm -hmm. This is how we get the fear of the Lord. All right, point number two. Point, no point number two. Yes, point number two. 
Guys, invite somebody on. Everyone needs to know this information. information. Point number two, reduce parental authority over the children. Oh my gosh, how genius. Just yeah, exactly, the kids do whatever they want. <laughs> she said, break the communication between parent and child. Why? So that parents do not pass on their Christian traditions wow. to their children. Liberate children from the bondage of their parents' wow. traditions. How? <laughs> Promote excessive child rights. Uh, child rights legislation, UNICEF, uh, is that called UNICEF? UNICEF Charter. Today, a child is able to say to a parent, I do not want to hear that. I do not want to or have to do what you are telling me. If you beat me, I will call Child Protective Services. Guys, we've all heard these stories. We've heard these stories of children calling uh, uh, the police on their parents, and I guess parents have to be apprehended. It's, it's, that is no, crazy. The, the children are apprehended, and they go to foster care. Wow. Where they're abused more. Okay, okay, right. That's right. the system that we live in. Yes, right. Okay. Children. Uh, she also said abolish corporal punishment. Now, this has been made law. Education, educators are no longer able to discipline children physically, and in some cases, by talking to them either, okay? Children cannot be disciplined. We have abolished corporal punishment. Schools are agents of implementation because where do most children spend most of their awake time? Teachers tell children you need to discover yourself. Self, they use words such as self-expression, self-realization, self-fulfillment are free. all buzzwords. Let them be free yeah. like birds. So guys, you can sure, let your you... child go out in the middle of the street and let a truck hit him. No, it's okay. Yeah. Don't yell at him. Don't, don't, please. Don't discipline. God disciplines those he loves. Yes. And let me tell you Amen. something. These points that you're bringing out here, these actually were written in the 18th century. I mean, the right. 19th century. Well, yeah, I'm, thinking, I'm, I'm thinking it was published in 1945. So this is over, <clears throat> that would be over 70 years. This is it's over 70 years ago, this woman uh, predicted. But what I'm saying, these things. things have come to pass. Yes. These things have yes. actually come to pass. This is the times that we're living in. Mm -hmm. That's why when somebody goes, oh, there's no, there's no such thing as prophecy. There's no such thing as things in the past. Oh, yeah, there is. Oh, yeah, and you know what? If you, if, and you, shame on you if you don't pay attention. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. So you know what? Well, it's, not, it's hard. It's hard to, to oh, wake yeah. up to truth. It's, it's not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing. But, guys, you have to realize that once you open your eyes to truth, you are even that much more protected by God. Let me tell you, because when you realize how evil, evil really is, you're going to realize how good God really is, okay? So um, the scripture I have for this is Proverbs 13, 24. He who spares his rod hates his son. Hmm. But he who loves him disciplines him promptly. I know this is going to really... Um, upset some people but it is not he who spares he who spares the rod spoils the child it is that is incorrect the bible says he who spares his rod hates his son wow. okay that's why that's that's what why god is saying discipline is so important okay that's why i have a son who i don't have to look at before beyond beyond behind bars to, to communicate with him. Right. Because we discipline right. him, Amen. and he's a well-adjusted young man. Amen. Proverbs 23, 13, and 14. Do not withhold correction from a child, for if you beat him with a rod, he will not die. You shall beat him with a rod and deliver his soul from hell. God, now, guys, we don't mean hitting your child in anger. We don't mean any of this. But this is actually in the word of God. We're talking about correcting your children, okay? And it's okay to... to Don't to, be... It's not, yeah. it's not beating your children. That's right. There's a difference. That's right. Yes. 
like, you know, okay. Yeah, this is just how the Bible describes it, okay? Proverbs 23, 13, and 14. You are delivering his soul from hell. And that's what I want to do. That's what I want more than anything for my children. Right. I want them to be saved. That's what I want more than anything for my children. What's the What's the time? It is 8.30. Okay. All right. Point minutes. number three. Guys, invite somebody in. This is point number three. Alice Bailey says, destroy the Judeo-Christian family structure or the traditional Christian family structure. Yep. She said, liberate the people from the confines of this structure. It is oppressive and the family is the core of the nation. This is what she said, guys. If you break the family, you break the nation. Ooh. Wow. I, I don't even know what to say to that. Now, why? She says, so that the youth will not grow up with a sense of belonging, identity, or structure. Boy, isn't that the truth? that our youth has not grown up with a sense of belonging, identity, or structure. How? Promote sexual promiscuity. Free young people to the concept of premarital sex. Let them have free sex. Let it, let it uh, lift it so high that the, joy, that the joy of enjoying it is the highest joy in life fantasize it that everyone will feel proud to be seen to be sexually active even those outside of marriage look at our music people wow look at our music where, where does it come to every time i read this i, I just can't i just can't even no, I mean, believe it's it it's today it's, it's, it, you know i mean and i hate to bring it up but i mean you know you we worship Prince. It was all about sex. Free sex. Do what you want. Yeah, you know, yeah. feel free to express your body the way you want to express it. That's right. That's not Christianity. No, no. That's not the way the Lord intended sex to be. Sorry. Well, she says use advertising industry, media, TV, magazines, film industry to promote sexual enjoyment as the highest pleasure in humanity this is why sex is everywhere we look everywhere. this is why this is why alice bailey's 10 point plan guys to destroy your faith to destroy christianity okay and where's divorce the, is the biggest in the church wow the church guys this is this is what you call propaganda okay it's not art for art's sake, okay? This is art with a purpose this was and with a plan. This was written years ago. Mm -hmm. This wasn't written last week. That's right. This, this is really good That's stuff, That's right. Man. It's, it's mind-blowing. It's good stuff, but it's horrible. Mind-blowing, yeah. It's horrifying. just mind-blowing. Guys, please look this up. Research this for yourself. Please share this information with someone else. Okay, this is a quote um, by... Uh, a movie director, I made the most vulgar, entertaining, actionful, uh, sensical, give them a new thrill every five minutes, have everything, sex, violence, humor, because I want people to come and see it. This is a quote by famous movie director Francis Ford Coppola. Oh, yeah. Okay? The, um... Think he did the Godfather movies? Yep. Yeah. So he said, he says I make. He he said he was going to make the most vulgar films. There was going to it was going to have everything, sex and violence and humor, and people were going to come and see it. He was going to do whatever he had to do for people to come see his movies. And guess what? We have. <laughs> we have. Okay. We this own is a quote them. by yeah. Francis we, we Ford yeah. Coppola. Sure. Um, this is a quote by Martin Scorsese. Um, every 15 pages of movie script, nudity. Whether it's a leg, full nudity, or just a suggestion 
of nudity. Every 15 pages, you have to keep that interest look, going. Look at Pornoscope. <laughs> I mean, it's what I mean. Guys, you have been, you duped. have, oh my goodness. You've been duped. We, all of us, all of us duped. have been <clears throat> uh, brainwashed, have been programmed. Guys, Martin Scorsese himself says, every 15 pages, there has to be nudity. Martin Scorsese has made a, 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 an inc incredible amount, amount of movies, a lot of movies. I can't rename them he right now. He needs the Bible challenge. Hopefully I haven't seen them, but I'm sure I have. He needs the Bible Every challenge. Every 15 pages, there must be nudity. Guys, this is what is going on. This is what is happening wow. to society and to your children. All right? Those are quotes from two of the biggest movie directors there have ever been. Okay, now, um, just some information, just some statistics. One in five Americans has an STD. Guys, an STD is a sexually transmitted disease. That means 65 million people in the United States alone carry sexually transmitted diseases and can pass it on to others, okay? And then it says, which I think this is hilarious, it says the good news is that some STDs can be cured. <laughs> like, yes, that's that's, having the, sex. that's the good news? That's the good news. Like, wow. Guys, if you're believing for healing for a sexually transmitted disease, we believe for your healing you with you. Because 65 million people, see, this is why. It's, it's like, an epidemic. It's like, yes, it's an, it's an epidemic. People are people have being. People are being um, infected through, through uh, per promiscuity. Yeah, promiscuity. People are being infected with diseases. Guys, you know that this is true, and you know what? We're going to believe for your healing. Absolutely. And um, it's you know, guys, you have to understand that when you commit sexual immorality, you are not only uh, affecting your soul but you are affecting your physical body. And this is where, Let's not go to Rome this, is where this comes from. All right, now, just to, just to prove that point, uh, Proverbs 14, 34, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Guys, this is what she was promoting. This was her propaganda. She, wanted to, she wants to get everyone into sin and everyone to rebel against God. But it says righteousness exalts and that's why this nation is not exalted. That's why this nation is declining. Correct. Okay? Because of Alice Bailey's 10 point plan. Well, just like, you know, again, you know, one of the tools you, you, you spoke about, uh, t you know, movies and television. Yeah. yeah. But music is probably the greatest oh. of all which MTV, oh. you know, Masonic Television, mm -hmm. and that's not some weirdo term. No, it's no, the real it's deal. True. That's what that's what it is. It's Masonic yeah. te Television. Yeah. MTV is right um, below or, or above. It's, it's right above. It's right above the Masonic, the Masonic Temple. Lodge. The Masonic Lodge. That's, in, that's uh, the headquarters. I think it's in Canada. It's in Ontario, somewhere. Canada. Mm -hmm. You can look it up. And you have people say, why, why are you exposing this stuff? Because nobody else is, and we have to tell the truth. In other words, why wouldn't you? Why this. wouldn't you want to know? Yeah. yeah. How you're being deceived? How, you being how deceived? are you being yes. tripped up? Yes. You know what? I want to know if I'm being tripped. For the last seventy years, in particular, correct. This, this has been strong. In in uh, in uh, you know, people are putting this into action right. for the last seventy years, and that's why. Things are the way they are. Messed up. If you want to know how, the, why the world is the way it is, guys, listen up to this 10-point plan. Um, Proverbs 6.32, whoever commits adultery with a woman lacks understanding. He who does so destroys his soul. Well, how about these, these new four preachers that have now a television show on Fox? And the very first question they ask is, is pornography... A, it is, is pornography uh, adultery? <laughs> and all and they go, oh no. Wow. Preachers. Wow. Really? Really, preachers? Wow. You need to get saved. Wow. And you know what? Anybody that supports that foolishness, these preachers on television, you, you better hold them accountable. Oh my gosh. 
Shut them off. They, they need to know Alice Bailey's ten point plan. Well, they don't know Alice Bailey. They've been duped. Because because she's white and she wouldn't they wouldn't pay attention to her. Okay? That's the facts. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just telling you how it is. This white woman is is, is demonic. Yeah. Actually that's not Alice Bailey. Again, that's Blavatsky. That's my uncle. So I don't know anyway. why they did that. But anyway, um, one Corinthians six eighteen. The Bible says flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. Okay, so every sin, so sexual morality is different from other sins in this way. But it says, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. And, and I'm sorry, but that would include masturbation and that would include pornography. That's just what I think. Don't, don't, and you don't can justify it all you want, but I'm sorry. That is included in sexual immorality, guys. See, see here's the thing, thing, Veronica. We've become so yeah. desensitized. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Learn how to speak, Angela. You know. but anyway, no, we've become so so oblivious or brain brainwashed yeah, brain by the system. By this. By this, by plan, this, by this plan that has been in, to, in motion in the last seven right. years. Yeah. It's right. It's, it's, it's to okay. purposely... Through every facet of society. With a very purposeful plan. Yeah, it is. It's not... Very purposeful. Exactly. And that's what, what I want you guys to realize. This is a very purposeful plan. This is on purpose. Right. This is a plan. And this is a conspiracy against your faith. Okay? No, but we're saying if, if people reject this or people say, oh, they're weird or they're nuts... No, 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 no. We're not weird. Really? We're not weird and we're not nuts. We're awake. This is the No, we is, are aware. Is, has happened. No, no. We are aware and we are awake. Yeah. And we are we our eyes are very clear yeah. to what's going on in the world. You know what? And you can really get something. You can get your life you can get saved by just yeah. by seeing this stuff. Mm -hmm. Believe me. Yes. By me by seeing the truth, yes. obviously. How much time do we have? Do we have time for point number four? Honey, Viviana, we think that it's a quarter of. All right. Um, what point do you want? Three? Should we do one more point? Yeah, do another should point. Do, okay. All right. Point number four. If sex is free, then make abortion legal and make it easy. If sex is free, then make abortion legal free. and make it easy. Guys, you know you pay the cable bill, these things free. have happened. These things have already happened. She said, build clinics for abortion and put health clinics in schools. Right. If people are going to enjoy the joy of sexual relationships, they need to be free of unnecessary fears. Okay. In other words, they should not be hampered by unwanted pregnancies and diseases. Oh my gosh, you don't want to be hampered down by... Unwanted pregnancies and diseases. Really? That's such an inconvenience. Wow. Whew. Abortion, as told by Christians, is oppressive and denies our rights. We have not a right to choose whether we want to have a child or not. If a woman does not want the pregnancy, she should have the freedom to get rid of that pregnancy oh. in the easiest and painless way possible. Besides, if you carry the unwanted pregnancy, then give them up for adoption, that system is so unkind to them. So just get rid of them and spare them that life and the hindering of yours. How about this, honey? How about simple sex education? Wow. Remember, sex, sex education 101. Okay? If you lie with a man or woman and you have sex with that person, Right? You're making a choice to do that. Are you not? Are you saying, if we have sex together, we're making a choice, a conscious, mature choice to do this. Okay? Now, if you, if you happen to get a sexual disease or you happen to get pregnant, those are the consequences of your decision to have that sex. Correct, people? I mean, am I, am I crazy? Okay? Okay, and if that's, that be true, Okay, now, once you get pregnant, you lost your right because th that baby has a right to live. You already had your choice. 
You could have said, look, I'm not going to have sex with this person. And you can't plead ignorance. It's sex education 101. I think every child knows about this in school when they go to school. So, but when you're an adult, you realize it even more. Do not, that's why I can't support that. So like anybody who votes for Hillary Clinton or Obama, that's what you're voting for. They're, allowed, they're, they're saying it's okay, therefore killing of babies. And if that's what you believe, then you know what? Then don't, you can't be a believer. I want to no, talk about honey, Margaret's... I just want to say. Oh, yeah, no, go it's, ahead. It's a fact. I'm, I'm adding to what you're saying. Okay, baby. Adding, yeah. ahead. Margaret Sanger, guys, you have to look up this woman, please. She is the founder of Planned Parenthood. You ever heard of that? Oh, yeah. I think everybody has. Oh, yeah. Okay, Margaret Sanger, incidentally, was a theosophist, okay? <laughs> she was an occultist. And she was a racist, okay? Right. She used to um, <clears throat> speak at Ku Klux Klan She wanted to kill meetings. black people. Yes. That yes. Demon. Guys, every African American person needs to know this. Every black they American be right. person yeah. you want to know needs history? to know about Margaret Sanger and Planned Parenthood. It is Planned genocide. Come on, Why girl. do you think that these uh, Planned Parenthoods are in the urban areas? Why do you think that they are there? Okay? My God. This woman My God. was a racist. That's okay? Right. Look it up. Look up her story, her yeah. history. Margaret Sanger, founder of Planned Parenthood. Okay? Very, very important. Now, coincidentally, I did find a, a quote from a person that you just mentioned. And she said, I admire Margaret Sanger enormously. Her courage, her tenacity, her vision, okay? Her vision, her vision mm -hmm. oh, yeah. for genocide, okay? Wow. To, yeah, yes. Wow. Who do you think this, this quote was from? Hillary Clinton. Yes. Yeah, and her husband was was impeached. If we remember, see, we forget. You know, this kind. Of, I can't believe how. Two thousand nine, guys. She quoted this. Sexual immorality. I admire Margaret Sanger enormously. Her courage, her tenacity, her vision. My guys, God. please My look God. up this. Who My this God. woman is, My Margaret God. Sanger, and you'll see <clears throat> that it is true. What what we're saying. And, okay? and, and hold on, we met Hillary Clinton at the White House. Very nice person. Okay. Sure. And I'm sure Obama is a very, you know, I have a, I have a friend who's a musical director for Reverend Wright's church, and he says Obama's a very nice guy. He's a, probably a, yeah. a great hang, but they don't know Jesus. Yep. They have no relationship with Christ. Yep. They have no understanding of the principles of the Bible and how to, to, to live your life according to pleasing the Father. And you know what? Killing babies is not pleasing the Father. Right. Okay, and if you vote for that, then you need to repent and turn from it, and you need to say, you know what? I don't know, and I'm not saying vote for Trump or these other people. They're all liars. You know, the devil yeah. needs sacrifices. Exactly. The devil requires sacrifice. Liars, right? So you see, God says, you know, obedience is better than sacrifice. That's right. So the devil requires sacrifices. And let me tell you, he requires human sacrifice. How many millions of babies have, right. have died? He requires human How many? sacrifice. Millions. Jeremiah 19.5 says they have also built the high places of Baal, going back to Guys, Temple of Baal, to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings to Baal. My God. God said, which I did not command or speak, nor did it come into my mind. Guys, this abortion has never come into God's mind. Never, ever has, has it come into God's mind. No, it hasn't, honey. It is straight from the mind of Satan. Straight from the heart of Satan, straight from the spirit of Satan, okay? This is where these ideas come from. This is where all this 10-point plan comes from, the devil, okay? It was all demonically inspired, okay? And, and Alice Bailey just yeah. happened to be the one who put it on paper. You know what, and it's hidden right under plain sight. 
Because it's all the all this information yes, is available information to you. Information is out there. But yes. we don't see. No, we we're not interested in information. You know, because we want to hear a nice Bible story. Well, how many nice Bible stories are you going to hear till your life changes? Okay, this is. I pray that this will change your life. I pray that this service will wake you up. I pray that this God that God will speak to your heart, speak to your mind. It will speak to that brainwash. In your mind that you've been spoken to over the past year, years and years and years of your life. We have got to wake you know up. We've got to be vigilant. Maybe you were meant to be yes. aborted. Yeah. Maybe you were meant to be aborted. And maybe you have aborted a baby. You know? And you know what? We are going to pray for God's forgiveness and That's mercy right. for you. For you to That's be right. relieved, guys, of that guilt and that shame. The Bible says in Jeremiah 1, 5. If you guys want to know when the conception of life is, it says it right here in Jeremiah 1, 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. God said, I knew you before I formed you in the womb. You know, honey, we know what loss is. We know what the devil is. And we know what he's done, for, done against us. Okay, I know he has come after us with everything in his, because you know what? And I thank the Lord that he's created us to be bold. We're not going to stop. We're going to continue on to be vigilant and bold. And we're not cowards. You know what? And we, you know what? A coward would turn his back on you and not tell you the truth. A coward would lie to you. That's what a coward would do. But somebody who's not a coward would tell you the truth in boldness, in courage. And I'll tell you what, that's what we're going to do here at Higher Place Church. We're not going to cower down to the world or the politics that yeah. you, this People entertainment that's on television. to know the truth. And exactly. Truth, and truth is being hidden. Jeremiah 1, five. before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. God sanctified you before you were born, guys says, I ordained you. God has already ordained you mm. as a prophet to mm. the nations, as a pastor, as a minister, as, as an evangelist, as Come on, whatever it is. God has already ordained you. Yeah, right. All right. Psalm 139. And this is one of my favorite um, Love it. scriptures. Psalm 139, 13 through 16. For you formed my inner parts. You covered me. In my mother's womb, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are his works, and we are his works, guys. And it says, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your, um, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed guys god saw you and created you wow. before you were even formed he created you and it says and in your book they were all written the days fashioned for me when as yet there was there there was none of them god hmm. has already written your story guys god has already written your story he has already fashioned all your days. He has already ordained you for a special plan and a special purpose. Guys, wow. please choose God's plan. Wow. Choose to be a part of God's plan and not this, this evil 10-point plan. Please what, make that decision what did we tonight. What today when we were walking? I said, how could you ever think anything less of yourself? of what God thinks Amen. of you. Amen. You can never be sad again about yourself. I'm talking about your self-worth, who you are. Your, 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 I just want to talk about your, 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 your physical self. Your, the, you are perfect in God's eyes. Amen. God That's says right. it. In other words, don't worry about what man says about you. They're, right. not, they're, they're not gonna, they're not going to save you. The, the Savior, the one, the one who died for us on the cross, said you're perfect. You're wonderful. You're perfect and wonderfully made in That's his right. image. Yes. So how can you ever be sad about what you who you are as a person? Because yeah. they wait a minute. My God, 
He chose me. You know what? He, he, he created me. He and chose he spared us before me. the foundation of the earth. And he spared the my, of the world. And he spared my life from abortion. Yeah. I have, you know what? Who will weep yeah. for those babies? Who will weep for them? Will the nations weep for them? Will the, will, where are we going to stand for them? You know what? <laughs> We've got to wake up people. And we have got to come to an understanding of who we are in Christ. Yeah. But you know what? You can't do this without God. You can't do it without Jesus. You can't. You can't do it. On, no religion is going to help you. No, no organization is going to help you. The Masons ain't going to help you. The Catholics ain't going to help you. Jesus is the only one that can help you. Yeah. He yes. says, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. I'm telling you, Come to Jesus. Amen. Come to Amen. Jesus. Yes, open Come. up the word. This is why we want you guys to learn your Bible, because when you open up that word, you will learn God's plan for your life, okay? You don't have to be a part on, of this wicked on, plan and this plot. You can accept God's plan tonight for your life. So let's just you know pray what? for that, you are, I, mean, I just want to say this, is that... You don't belong to nobody. You were, you were birthed by, by, you know, from, by, by God himself. Okay? When, if you really believe that, you really know that, okay, then you will never be trapped in an organization or a church or under authority, uh, you know, under this controlling spirits, okay, because you will have the freedom to know that God is on your side. You have got to come to an understanding in your life that God is, you know, we don't we don't own you. We we you don't belong to Higher Place Church. Okay? I mean you can be part of what what, what we're speaking and what we're seeking and, and, the, and the truth that we're after, but the, the bottom line is you belong to Jesus. Okay, baby. So we're gonna pray. God, do you want do you wanna pray? Or pray, do you want pray, to pray? pray um I wanna pray with you guys to accept this plan. Jeremiah 29 11 says, God knows the, the plans, plans that he has you. for you. Plans for welfare, not, not for, for calamity, calamity, but to give you a future, future and, and a hope. hope. Guys, there's no future in this 10 point plan no. of, of Alice no. Bailey's. There's no future. There's only destruction. See, there it is. Yeah. See, no future. when there's no this hope, cutting off your future. there's no Jesus. That's right. When there's no future, there's no Jesus. So you choose what yes. you want to believe. Right. Okay, God, just pray with me right now. Uh, you can say, Dear God. Dear God. I come to you now. I come to you now. And I receive. And I receive. Your plan. Your plan. For my life. For my life. I receive. I receive. What you have. What you have. Ordained for me. Ordained for me. I give you my life. I give you my life. I, I promise to serve you. I promise to serve you. I ask for my sins to be forgiven. I ask for my sins to be no forgiven. No matter what they are. No matter what they are. I believe. I believe that they are forgiven. That they are forgiven because of the blood. Because of the blood that you shed. That you shed on the cross. On the cross. I thank you, God. I thank you for God. dying on the cross for, for me, dying on the cross giving for your me. life, giving your for life me, for me, and being raised from the dead. And being raised from the dead. I thank you, God, that I you are protecting me, protecting me from all evil. From all evil. And from the wicked one. And from the wicked one. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. That I accept this plan. That I accept this and plan. And I receive this plan. And I receive this plan. That you have ordained for me. That you have ordained. Help me to know. Help me to that know. I am fearfully. That I am fearfully. And wonderfully and made. wonderfully made. In your image, in your God. Image, God. And and to to do. And to do. Uh, your good works. Your good works. And to serve you. And to serve you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I ask this. I ask this. And I believe this. And I believe this. In Jesus' in mighty Jesus name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You Hallelujah. Know, my, 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 my brothers and sisters, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Right. He didn't come to condemn you. That's right. He came right. to love you. That's God. And That's save right. you. If you, if you ask for forgiveness wow. for... A, an abortion or, or whatever, it is forgiven right now. Right it now. is under is washed away by the blood 
of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's why there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, okay? You are in Christ Jesus now, and there is no more guilt and no more condemnation. And we're going to love you to the truth and help right. the high place. And I'm going to say this. You know what? This is going to, we're going to continue this next week. Yes. Very important yes. that you share this. And you know what? There's still, um, I think, five or six more points. Right. But we're, but we're going to go. We're, oh my but I want you to, I, I need, this needs to be driven home. Yes. You know, and we're yes. going to go over it a little bit more yes. so that next week that we'll go back a little bit so we can review to, yes. to catch up to where yes. we are. Send, send, this, uh, send this replay to somebody, please. Yeah. People need to know everyone deserves right. to know this information, okay? And please uh, come back next week, Wednesday, 7.30 um, Central Standard Time. Um, and, um, and please invite somebody, okay? Invite somebody. And we will see you next week. We are Higher Place Home Church. And that's right. We're, we're loving you to the truth. We love you all. Love God, you. Bless you. God bless Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Peace.